Hey everyone, welcome back to Splice Fabrication. My name is Aaron and today we are going to talk about one of my favorite tools in the shop, the Langmuir Systems Crossfire Pro CNC Plasma Cutting Table. So first the basics. What is plasma cutting? Plasma cutting is a process that allows us to cut metal through an accelerated jet of hot plasma. That plasma is initiated by an electrical arc at the tip of the plasma torch and then accelerated with compressed air that runs through a nozzle also within the torch. And it's the combination of those two together that allows you to actually cut metal. Now, that plasma jet can be controlled by hand with the plasma torch here, pulling the trigger and running it along the metal, or it can be controlled with CNC or computer numerical control by way of a plasma table. And that's what we have here. So who's this for? This table is, is absolutely for the home hobbyist and not for somebody that is interested in doing production work. The overall cutting envelope, as well as the build quality of a table like this, is not meant to run eight hours a day cutting many, many parts. Um, now, if you are looking to add CNC capabilities to your home shop, this table is perfect. A quick Google search will show you that an industrial plasma table, due to its size and, and, and beefed up features, will come in at tens of thousands of dollars, where this table is coming in at around $2,750. But don't think that you're giving up all the features in order to get a table like this at that price point. This table comes in with a bunch of great built-in features, as well as a few optional features that I think really add to its capability and give you the option to have high quality parts coming off of a very small footprint table. So let's go, let's dive into uh, what those features are. First, what is the cutting envelope? This table here can cut 48 inches in the X dimension and 33 inches in the Y dimension. Underneath the, the cutting table is a water table that is meant to help capture some of the smoke that is generated while plasma cutting. Um, it can hold approximately two inches of water depth and does a great job of both capturing the smoke as well as cooling the parts as the water splashes up underneath um, onto the metal and, and keeps things cool, helping to minimize distortion. Another big piece of the table is the optional limit switches that I've added. Uh, these limit switches keep the, the motion controller aware of the overall size and where the torch is in relation to the table, um, prevents you from driving in any dimension off of the, the table's actual physical hard limits as well as these limit switches help in recovery of a cutting error in the middle of a cut file. Um, since the torch knows where it's at, you can go back and restart exactly where you were and it's just like the error never occurred. Um, next is a, a very, very important feature and that is a powered Z-axis. Um, the the Z-axis controls the cutting distance that the torch is away from uh, the metal. This in plasma cutting is critical to creating a high quality cut with minimal dross. And this powered Z axis does that in two ways. First, an, a built in feature called initial height sensing allows the torch to drop down onto the top of the metal, touch off, know that exact location, and then retract to the proper pierce height. Then, once you've actually pierced the metal and the torch is, is running the program, there is a torch height controller, which is an optional $400 feature that is 100% is worth purchasing. Um, but that allows the, the motion controller to monitor the voltage that is at the, tor the tip of the torch and hold that constant, therefore holding the distance constant um, from the torch to the metal all the way through the cut. Metal is rarely perfectly flat, especially once you've cut it and you've got a little bit of heat distortion in that. Um, this torch will actually follow the contour of that flat metal uh, while it is cutting and it just really, really helps in creating a high quality cut with minimal dross on the back side. Next, I mentioned this already a couple of times. Uh, the machine comes in with a built with a built in motion controller to control all the stepper motors. Um, the motion controller is interfaced uh, by the user with a piece of software known as fire control um, that is Langmuir systems proprietary software and the software only gets better with time Langmuir systems constantly updates it it has amazing features um, such as what i mentioned before around recovering from 
an error in the in the program. Um, it can also help you home the machine. Uh, it, it's just really, really easy to interact with. It allows um, cuts without programs, actually. It has built-in straight lines that you can cut if you just need to sever material. All that is built right into the software fire control that comes with this machine. Next, um, the machine, while it does have quite a few features, uh, it does not come with everything. And I've had to add a few um, added features really just for convenience. Um, the first of those is a shelf underneath. Uh, the shelf is what I use to store materials, uh, the plasma cutter, uh, consumables, anything like that, just in some extra storage space. But then I've also put the shelf on casters and leveling feet. So the table can roll around my garage with ease. Uh, and then once I'm in the final position, I use the leveling feet uh, to get the table as level as possible, which help, helps with the motion um, and make sure that the, any of the axes don't bind as well as making sure I can get as much water in the water table without it spilling over. Um, so we've got a, a water system that includes a tank and a pump that allows me to pump the water up into the table. And then once I drain it, it, it runs through a filter before it goes back into the tank to make sure that we're filtering all the metal shavings and everything else like that um, out of the, the cutting fluid before it returns to the tank. Next, um, we've added an air dryer system. Plasma cutting is very sensitive to moisture in the compressed air stream and having the driest air possible is only going to help uh, create high quality cut. So I've got a couple of different air dryers here, a filter, a desiccant dryer. They're all mounted underneath the table and provide um, the, the compressed air stream with multiple opportunities to remove the moisture uh, before it ends up into the torch. Next. And last, we've added a smoke removal system. It's here in the back side. Um, it's, it's really just a Harbor Freight blower, but the, the water table does not catch all of the smoke that's generated while plasma cutting. So I've used a blower and some ductwork here to help pull any uh, remaining smoke away from the table, and then I exhaust it outside my garage. Okay, so that's the features of the table. Now, another important part of a plasma cutting table is the actual plasma cutter. This is the Primeweld Cut 60. It is a 60 amp plasma cutter. But one important feature of this uh, machine is that it has a CNC port. This CNC port allows the plasma cutter and the motion controller to talk back and forth. Um, this, is how that, this is how the plasma cutter is fired. Um, and then when the machine is traversing uh, and you don't, need, you don't want the plasma cutter to be running, then this allows the plasma cutter to turn off as well. So um, it's very, very important to keep in mind when you're purchasing a plasma cutter for your plasma table that it has the optional CNC port added on there so that the two can talk back and forth. And then finally, with a plasma cutter, you need compressed air. Uh, the com uh, air compressor that I'm using is a 60-gallon air compressor, uh, nothing too fancy. The, the big piece that you want to keep in mind is that it has the air capacity to run a plasma cutter. The, the air compressor I'm using can run greater than 10 CFM. This plasma cutter running at full go, it consumes about 5 CFM. A good safety margin for this is to take whatever the plasma cutter can use and then double that, get that for your air compressor, and usually you won't have to worry about hitting a duty cycle um, when you scale it in that way. So with that, um, we can actually start to do an example cut. Okay, now that the plasma table is set up, let's finalize a few details and make our first cut. First, we're going to home the machine. To do that, we have to open up the fire control software that comes built into the motion controller. We'll go over here and we click home. Ask us 
to make sure we want to actually home the machine, we do. And when I hit this button, what's going to happen is both the X and Y axis will touch off on the limit switches and find the back left corner of the machine. That is zero, zero. Okay, we have found home. As you can see here, now we have a full footprint of the machine. I can start to move the torch. We'll back it off the corner slow, and then we can go ahead and rapid. This is 300 inches per minute, the fastest the machine can move. We're not gonna cut it 300 inches, but we can traverse at 300 inches a minute in order to get to our location. The next step is now that we have home the machine is we need to zero the machine. So first, in order to do that, we need to open up our part file. We are gonna cut some practice plates today. So we'll go through and we'll find the practice plate part file. This is an NC file. That is all the G code that it takes to cut this shape. We'll open this up. And you can see here, this is a very simple shape. It's just a rectangle with some radius corners. Uh, and now the machine is, is, has put this part kind of out here in space. Um, but we need to zero that and let the torch know exactly where we're going to be. So in order to waste as little metal as possible, we're going to zero right here. So we go and we zero all work axes. You can see when I did that, the machine translated over. So now we have a new X, Y, and Z zero. So this is where we will start our cut. Okay, so one last thing before we cut, we need to connect our work clamp, make sure we complete the plasma circuit. And all that's left is to hit start. So here we go. Okay, and just that fast, we'll get the torch out of the way so we can extract the part. If you hear the air rushing by there, that is just the post flow on the torch, uh, keeping, keeping things cool. So we'll let that time out. Just a few more seconds here. And there we go. All right. And we'll knock our part loose here. It's already free. And just like that. We've got our first plasma cut part. Okay, so to wrap things up, this tool adds tremendous capabilities to my shop and I couldn't be more happy with the way it performs. If you've got any questions or comments about the Crossfire Pro, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll follow up. To finish up the video, we'll show a few pictures of the things we've made. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. That did not work. <laughs> Post quite a few features that it's... I'm going right now? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so the Crossfire Pro 